yes uh, so <clears throat> hello friends uh, i'm vivek tiwari so today we are meeting once again for uh, the concluding class on material science and metallurgy so if you remember uh, what are the things i have been telling you about is uh, in some two or three lectures was uh, basically about the unit number 4 uh, that is uh, uh, ferrous and non ferrous metals and in that we have discussed about the ferrous metals like steel and then tool steels hsla stainless steels etc and again in the non ferrous metals we have discussed about the different type of cast iron that is grey cast iron periodical graphite iron white cast iron malleable cast iron then non ferrous metals like aluminum and copper was discussed in the last class and today's class uh, we will be discussing about the third part of the unit number 4 that is material testing so what happens in material testing is that as a design as a engineer uh, many of the people will be working as design engineers in their future and as design engineers many attempts we have to suggest a material for particular type of loadings so for suggesting the different type of materials for a particular type of uh, loading you have to check whether that material will uh, take up that amount of or that type of loadings or no so in order to do that we perform certain kind of tests on that material and that tests are called as a material testing material testing is one of the important uh, areas of uh, material science and metallurgy okay so i have uh, to thought of uh, covering up this many type of uh, uh, material testing today and today will be the final uh, lecture on this subject so we'll go a bit uh, very quickly with this all different type of test first we'll start with the tensile test then we'll go ahead with the compression test then hardness test then we'll see the creep test fatigue test and impact test so quickly i'll just give you an overview of all this type of tests so uh, because uh, this all tests have also been done by you in the mom lab also so we'll not devote much uh, time to it in today's one session one hour session we'll try to finish off each and every type of this test which is being done somewhere possible i will try to introduce the metallurgical aspects of or metallurgical view point also so coming to uh, to the first starting slide that is material testing why we should go for material testing many engineers are primarily concerned with the design of machines and structures so many of the engineers are uh, working with the designing of mach machines and structures and these designs will be subjected to the different type of loadings and the selection of a material proper for a proper application is very much important and this selection depends upon the effect of the external load acting on the material the behavior of the material how does a material behave under different type of loading is called as the material is called as the uh, is called as the mechanical behavior of material and the test which is being done to perform or evaluate that behavior is called as the mechanical test it's called as the mechanical test so just with the, this brief background we'll go ahead with the different type of test just uh, i have named it in the form of a table so the most famous type of test is uh, done which is done to evaluate the properties of materials is the tensile test tensile test gives you so many important properties about the material you talk about the or you tell about the strength of the material you tell about the stiffness elasticity plasticity resilience ductility malleability so many properties of the materials can be understood by doing one important test called as the tensile test which is very much important test okay so this is the very much important type of test which gives you maximum property about the material then there is compression test which will tell you about the malleability and brittleness there is impact test which is done to e evaluate the uh, capability of the material to take sudden shocks of loadings bending test is there then there is hardness test shear test fatigue test creep and wear so all these type of tests are done basically to evaluate certain properties of the material certain properties of the material are being evaluated by doing this type of test that is what is the understanding now what we'll do is that we'll go ahead with the first important test called as the tensile test i have put some graphics some type of cartoons which will tell you what this uh, tensile test is so tensile test will tell uh, that the first image what i have put is the uh, uh, nothing but the tensile test wherein a component or a material is being pulled about in other are being pulled in two directions like this so that is nothing but an uh, graphic which shows you what is the tensile test torsional test is nothing but a material is there and it is being twisted in this direction so that is the torsional test or this is the bending test you have a material and if you try to bend in both the direction that's called as a bending test this is also a type of uh, shear test so just this graphic shows you that materials are subjected to the different type of loadings and you evaluate the properties of the material just for that understanding i have placed this image so now we'll go with the first important test called as the tensile test so as i said previously tensile test is the most important test that is being done 
in the worldwide uh, lab to understand the maximum properties of a material how this test is being done to tell you briefly the material is being taken on which the test is to be done it is being machined as per certain standard in the lathe machine then it is brought into the utm machine utm is means universal testing machine the utm machine will have two jaws one is called as the upper jaw and the other one is called as the lower jaw the machine component is put into the jaws and fixed there and then what we do is that we apply load on that material and with respect to time we see how much elongation is being happening in the material with the help of an instrument called as extensometer it is a sensor which will uh, tell you how much extension is happening in the on the material with respect to time so the final uh, reading what you will be getting out of the experimentation would be the load applied on the material and the extension happening then what you do is that you divide the load what you have applied on the material with the original cross section of the material you will get a component called as a stress and then
is showing basically this type of uh, tensile stress to strain curve in all the curves you should remember that stress is on y axis while strain in is on uh, x axis similarly if you have brittle material brittle material can you give me any examples yes glass can be an example for brittle material then cast iron can be one more example for brittle material the stress to strain curve will be looking something like this so i will write this as cast iron ci then uh, if you have a highly brittle material the brittle uh, the uh, stress to strain curve will look something like this similarly if you have polymeric material or uh, you say uh, you know plastics or polymers or rubbers then the curve or the stress to strain curve will look something like this here stress to strain uh, yeah, this one uh, proportionality will not be obeyed by the material so such type of curve will be shown by the polymeric material so these are some of the different type of curves what you will be getting out of doing the tensile uh, testing these uh, curves what i have shown basically are the tensile testing uh, or the signature curves for ductile materials these are the signature curves for brittle materials well this is a curve which will be typically shown by polymers or you know uh, rubbers then if you see the ceramic materials they will show basically this type of uh, curve because it is very brittle in nature if i talk about uh, composite materials it will show a new type of curve because it will be made up of two different type of materials which will have its own type of stress to strain curve so this is all about your uh, tensile test there is huge uh, many many things can be spoken about the tensile testing however we will restrict ourselves only to this much because there is a time lag and uh, just to have an understanding what uh, the tensile testing is being done well, uh, it is like this so basically if we see the machine of utm that is universal testing machine its parts are like this it will have an upper jaw and a lower jaw and an extensometer the extensometer is there to measure the extension while upper jaw and lower jaw is there to hold the material and apply the load any utm you take in the world this three features will be common in it one is the load application or the jaws which will hold the material second one will be some fixture to apply the load and the third uh, fixture will be to measure the extension happening on the material so once that material is being subjected to this type of test load and uh, strain is being measured from which stress and strain is being measured stress to strain is being obtained curve is obtained and from that curve uh, you get different properties of the material like elastic modulus then you also get the property like upper yield point lower yield point then you can get the ultimate tensile strength of the point also the fracture point all these things you have learnt in your other subjects also so just we will have an overview so uh, this test is the most important test that is being done okay now we'll go ahead with the next type of test which is called as the which is called as the compression test so compression test is just the opposite of your uh, tension tension test the second test is compression test what we are discussing now i'll go briefly because uh, compression test is not that important for a mechanical engineer compression test is just the opposite of the tension test here the load is applied in this direction rather than in this direction so that is that and compression test is being basically done on the brittle materials like cast iron glasses ceramic kind of materials where in the compression loadings is being uh, materials behavior under this type of loading is being checked so that's what i have written sorry so, okay so compression is the the opposite of the tension uh, tension test with respect to the load applied the test is done on the same machine so the same machine like utm the same machine is being utilized to do the compression test also and it is being done on the materials like cast iron concrete bricks ceramics etc so as i said this uh, test type of testing is basically useful for uh, civil engineers why because civil engineers are uh, coming across this kind of materials that is ceramic material then bricks concrete cast iron such type of materials are usually or widely used by civil engineers okay so that's why it is uh, most widely being done by the civil engineers right yes yes okay so this uh, is that uh, this is about your compression test okay so here what are the uh, some of the uh, precautions you have to take when you do the compression test when you do the compression test you have to keep certain things in your mind the things what you have to keep in your mind is that you should not take very huge length of specimen and carry out the compression test there should be a definite length to diameter ratio in fact to say the length should be short and should have a same kind of diameter that relation should be maintained l by d ratio it's called if it is very much big then what will happen is that when you apply the load the material will suffer from one type of uh, 
fracture or failure called as the buckling which is called as buckling wherein the material will undergo a C kind of structure and it will fracture so that is not required and you should see that L by D ratio is maintained and uh, you should see that uh, uh, that uh, you know that um, uh, material which you keep under the jaw should be flat should not be having a wedge kind of structure so all those precautions you have to take and carry out the compression test compression test is basically opposite that of that the tensile test and it is basically used by civil engineers to understand the property of brittle materials like concrete cer uh, ceramics cast iron bricks etc glasses etc okay and one more point of difference between our tensile tensile test and compression test is that there we make use of a sensor called as the actionometer while here we make use of an uh, sensor called as a compressometer which will measure the compression that is happening inside on the material the compression that's happening on the material so that is it the next type of test is called as the impact test impact test is basically done to understand the uh, strength of the material under sudden shocks of load so if the material uh, subjected to sudden shocks of load whether that material will be able to take that loading or no to check that we perform this type of test called as the impact test called as the impact test so i have uh, written on the board that when we sit on a chair we uh, when imagine a situation that we are going and sitting on a chair so what happens is that our weight of around 55 to 60 kg will be suddenly applied on the chair now the chair is expected to take this much amount of loadings or force and that is nothing but the impact force or impact loading simultaneously if i on the fan suddenly you will see the blades of the fan rotating it is also being subjected to the impact loading you might have seen uh, two vehicle come and crash each other then the one which fails will have its lower impact strength than the other one so in that manner you can correlate with the impact testing as impact testing is basically done to evaluate the properties of the material or the strength of the material at high sudden loads or sudden shocks of load okay okay so the test and the test which is being done to evaluate the capability of the material to take sudden shocks of load is the impact test impact test there are again two subdivisions you can opt for any two type any of the type of test to evaluate the impact strength of the material those tests are charpy test and the other one is the isod test the basic principle of both the test is the same here in both the test you have an hammer it is being elevated to a some higher degree you keep the specimen here at the bottom and you drop this hammer the hammer comes and hits the specimen and up and rises to some level the difference in the height what the hammer rise gives you the an understanding of how much amount of energy the material has absorbed before it rises to some higher level higher the amount of energy absorbed by the material higher will be the impact strength and lower the amount of energy absorbed by the material before undergoing fracture lower will be the impact strength of the material so this is the basic principle on which this uh, impact testing works however there are two type of test one is called as the charpy test and the other one is called as the isod test both have certain differences uh, in its working however the objective is the same objective of both the test is the same so isod and charpy are the two commonly type common type of test that are being employed the principle of the impact test is the same uh, as i have just explained to you there will be a hammer it will be raised so when you raise you give some potential energy to it you keep the specimen the machined specimen as per standard below and drop the hammer the hammer comes and hits the specimen and rises to some level it might rise to a always it will rise to a lower level than what you had dropped from so that difference in the height will tell you about how much the energy is being absorbed by the machined specimen in other words it will tell you about the impact strength of the material right so uh, when it comes to the charpy test charpy test is basically very famous in britain in uk while isod test is very much famous in U usa and the difference between the two tests are mentioned here in the table so if you the if you see the isod test you might had an experience of doing this test in the lab also when you had performed the isod test you might have seen that the angle from which the hammer was dropped was just 85 degree while in the case of your charpy test it was 120 degree that was the difference then uh, the specimen if you see in case of your isod test it was 10 into 10 into 75 10 into sorry the 10 into 10 into length was 75 mm while in the case of charpy test the stand specimen shape is of 10 into 10 into 55 mm so that is basically done so that it gets fixed into the uh, fixture which is there at the bottom so for that reason there is a standard uh, uh, shape of the specimen to be machined that is the second point of difference 
The third point of difference is that in the case of your ISO test, there will be a notch. You provide a notch in both the cases whenever you do the impact testing. So that notch in the case of your ISO test is V, while in the case of Charpy it is U. Okay, U-shaped notch will be there. Then uh, if you see the specimen is clamped in a vertical cantilever position in the case of your uh, ISO test. In the case of your ISO test, the specimen is mounted in this fashion, vertical cantilever fashion, while in the case of Charpy test, it is mounted in simply supported fashion like this, simply supported. And then uh, in the case of your uh, uh, ISO test, the V notch what is there will be at the same direction of the, the um, uh, dropping hammer in the case of your ISO test, while in the case of Charpy test, the U notch will be there and U notch will be opposite to the direction of the dropping hammer. So these are the set of differences between the ISO and the Charpy. These are the some of the differences. However, the objective of doing the uh, test is very simple. It is being done to evaluate or come to understand impact strength of the material. Impact strength of the material. In other words, the ability of the material to take the sudden shocks of load. Okay, so that is there. And then, uh, right? So impact test is also sometimes uh, done to understand the brittleness of the material also. And sometimes impact test is also done to understand uh, something called as ductile to brittle transition. I had explained you previously in the first previous classes that that uh, the titanic ship underwent a phenomena called as ductile to brittle transition, wherein the titanic ship was being made of mild steel, which is ductile material. However, at low temperature conditions, the same ductile material started behaving like a brittle material and it had undergo a brittle fracture. That phenomena is called as ductile to brittle transition and that is usually been shown by BCC materials. This is one more thing what you I am introducing you to you today, ductile to brittle transition. And to evaluate this brittleness of the material, you do sometimes this type of test that is the impact test. So uh, with this, I will just wind up the test called as the impact test. So now basically we have uh, discussed three type of test. One we have discussed about the tensile test which gives you the maximum property of the material which is quite famous. The second type of test what we have discussed is about or called as the compression test which is just the reverse of that of the tensile test and then we have discussed the impact test which is done to find out the ability of the material to take sudden shocks of load, to take up the sudden shocks of load. Now we will go ahead with the next type of test which is called as the hardness test. So hardness test is very commonly common test which is being done in the lab as an initial check to find out the strength of the material. Okay, So a very simple type of test which is done as the preliminary level to evaluate the mechanical properties of any material is a hardness test. Here what we do is that the hardness test is being done and it gives you an indication about the plastic deformation of the material, ability of the material to take up the plastic deformation. Okay, and there is a relationship between the hardness test and the tensile test also. So, uh, the usage of hardness test sometimes is that you no need to perform the tensile test, you just perform the hardness test and by using some equation, you can relate it with the tensile test of the material also. So, hardness test is like this. Hardness is the second most important test that is being done in the lab to evaluate the property of material. Hardness means what? It is nothing but defined as the resistance of the material against plastic deformation. Hardness is usually measured by either scratch, indentation or rebound. Okay, there are different ways by which you can find out the hardness of the material. For example, if you want to have, know the hardness of a material, you bring one more material and try to rub that material with this material. So on the material on which the scratch will appear, that material hardness will be lower. Other way by which you can find out the hardness of a material is to just drop a, a ball bearing on that uh, material and see how much it gets rebounded. That can also be an another way by which you can find out the hardness of a material. So like that, uh, there are different type of tests. However, industries, the intendation method is usually used. The method by which the hardness is measured in industries is by intendation method. Here, you have a ball and it is being intended or forced upon the material on which you need to find out or expect the, to find out the hardness load is being applied and the intendation what is being produced that is being measured that will give you about or give you an idea about the hardness of the material. So based upon the principle of intendation there are two tests which is basically or three tests which is very much famous in industries that is Rockwell test, Brinell test and Vickers hardness test. These are the three important tests which is being done in industries. So coming to the Rockwell hardness test, in Rockwell hardness test the principle on which the Rockwell hardness test 
works is the depth of penetration so depth of penetration means what so suppose i will give you an example if you have a wax being kept on a table you bring a uh, wax and suppose you have a wood material wax and wood both are being kept on this table you bring a nail and try to put a load on that nail on in turn on the wax and then do the same exercise on the wood in which material the nail will go easily definitely it will be the wax on the wax the material will go the nail will go very easily while in the wooden material the nail will not go so easily that means the wax material is lesser harder compared to that of the wooden material okay so in other words i can say like that the depth of penetration in the material in which the depth of penetration is more its hardness will be lower and the material in which the depth of penetration is lower its hardness will be more so this inverse proportionality property is being utilized as a principle in this case of hardness testing that is called as the rockwell hardness test that is called as the rockwell hardness test okay so here it is like this uh, here hardness is correlated with the depth of penetration so many times the question is asked in interviews as well as in the quiz uh, like what is the principle on which the hardness rockwell hardness test works uh the answer is that it works on the principle of the depth of penetration it works upon the depth principle of depth of penetration and harder the material depth of penetration or indentation is less and vice versa example i have given you wood and uh, wax example and then what is the advantage of doing uh, this type of or uh, going for this type of test compared to that of the other type of hardness test is that rockwell hardness test is very much easy to perform you will get a direct reading if you do this type of test while well, in the case of your brinell hardness testing or wicker hardness testing there is an empirical relationship in between which you have to employ and get the hardness value of that material so in between applying that equation or empirical relationship inputting the variables and getting the hardness value will is considered as little cumbersome while well, in the case of rockwell hardness test you will get the reading directly okay so this is called as a uh, rockwell hardness test and uh, Uh, the test is uh, fast and hardness is directly got on a scale that is what is the advantage of this hardness testing loads are applied in two stages here you have to remember that in the case of rockwell hardness test two type of loads are applied one is called as the minor load and the other one is called as the major load the reason why you apply a minor load is to make ensure that the intender is in contact with the material sometimes what happens the material will have certain kind of scales oxides burrs and all so that will not ensure that the intender is in direct contact with the material to make an ensurement you apply a minor load that will ensure that the intender is in contact with the material and then you apply the major load to find out the hardness of the material so you apply the loading in two stages minor load and major load and suppose and you, even the minor load is always 10 kg while major load varies from 60 100 to 150 kg depending upon the material different different type of loadings are applied now the reading what you get out of a hardness rockwell hardness test is being written like this that is 82 hrb now this 82 represents the hardness number or the hardness of that material h means the hardness value r is the test by which you have got the hardness value that is the rockwell hardness test and b means you have used the b scale you have used a b scale so on the rockwell hardness test there are different different type of scales for different different type of material like a scale b scale c scale so the scale which have used depending upon the material will be mentioned so this is the output or reading you get out of the rockwell hardness test now you should remember that hardness is always considered as a number it doesn't have a unit now it is left to you as an exercise that you find out why hardness is considered as a number and it is not considered as a uh, it doesn't have a unit okay so you have to evaluate find out that since the time is less i'm just telling you that the output of the hardness test will be rockwell hardness test will be represented in this manner now now we will go ahead with the next type of test called as the brinell test so coming to the brinell test brinell test works upon the principle of the depth of not on the depth of penetration it works upon the area of penetration that means when you take a material intend a material on it put a force on that intendation then it will create an intender or a mark that marks area is being evaluated and that is being correlated with the hardness of the material okay that is the basic difference between brinell hardness test and rockwell hardness test this is the question which is usually asked in quizzes and as well as uh, interviews right so the the hardness test is based upon area of intendation the ball intender is made up of high carbon steel or tungsten carbide these materials are why used because they are considered as one of the hardest materials using this material you create an intender or intendation on the material on which you find are trying to find out the hardness 
for ferrous metals 300 kg is applied for 10 seconds for non ferrous metal only 500 kg is being applied for 30 seconds so for ferrous metal what happens the load applied is more the time for which it is being applied is very much lesser for non ferrous metals the load applied is lesser while well, the time for which it is being applied is more you have to find understand the relationship between this and once you carry out the or do the intendation then the hardness test is being found out by this number this is what i was telling about that brinell hardness test is why not preferred in industries is because you make use of a empirical relationship so you have to put input the uh, parameters into it and then you have to get the hardness number which is little considered as a little bit cumbersome means you have to find out the values put the values into that empirical relationship and get the reading well in the case of rockwell hardness test you just imagine you get the reading directly into the instrument right so when it comes to your uh, uh, empirical relationship bhn is given by 2p p represents the load that is either 3000 kg or 500 kg divided by pi into d d is the diameter of the ball in tender and d minus square root of d the uh, diameter of the ball in tender small d is the diameter of the intendation what you have produced so after applying the load you get an intendation its diameter has to be put, uh, inputted over here and get got the brinell hardness number so once you do the brinell hardness number so some of the, the precautions what you have to take here is that the surface should be free from oxides as well as oil grease etc so if you have a specimen which is not uh, having uh, uh, is not free from oil grease oxides and etc then you will probably get a wrong reading because the intender will not make a mark on the material so you have to be make an assurement that your surface on which you are finding out the brinell hardness number should be free from dirt oil uh, grease uh, scales etc and the surface should be free from oxides also and they should be parallel to the applied loads many a times we see that the material on which you are finding out the hardness is somewhat wet and not uh, you know flat compared to flat uh, when you apply the load so you have to make an assurement that the surface of the specimen should be flat to the applied load and uh, this is one of the reading what you get out of the brinell hardness testing being done so 45 hb 45 represents the brinell hardness number hb means the hardness is being found out by the brinell uh, technique then 10 represents the diameter of the intender this is what the question was being also asked in your ia also this 10 represents the diameter of the intender and 500 represents the load applied in kg so 500 means it is for non ferrous metal and 30 is the time for which it is being applied as i said 30 represents is usually used for non ferrous metal so suppose if you heard it was 3000 kg plus 10 seconds means what 3000 means the applied load 10 means the second or the time duration for which it was being applied however this is how the brinell hardness output result output is being given or communicated between the industries okay right now uh, we will go ahead uh, with the next type of test called as a weaker hardness test so weaker hardness test it is the principle is based similar that of the brinell hardness test that is the area of intendation is the principle on which the weaker hardness test works and here we make use of a diamond intender the load applied is for 10 to 30 seconds uh, and after the test you will, after the test if you see the intendation mark it will be in the form of a diagonal shape it will be in the form of a uh, like a rhombus shape with two diagonals the average of the two diagonals length is being measured and that is being put into this uh, equation and understood or vhn or weaker hardness number is being determined okay so vhn is nothing but given as 1.85 4 p is the amount of load divided by the d d is the average length of the two diagonals of that intendation what you have produced and uh, why we go for uh, weaker hardness test the reason why we go for weaker hardness test is that smaller intendation is being produced compared to the earlier cases here the intendation mark produces smaller so that you can make use of that same material for your work while in the other cases like rockwell hardness test or brinell test many a times you have to discard that material on which you have done the hardness test why that indentation mark will be very much bigger here the indentation mark is smaller so that is how uh, these are the different type of hardness test what is being done in the lab to evaluate the hardness test hardness of the material one is rockwell hardness test wherein you will get the reading directly or the hardness value directly out of the material brinell hardness test which is also being done on a large scale in the lab wherein you have to make use of an empirical relationship to get the hardness value then there is weaker hardness test which is also being done in the uh, lab but here the indentation mark is very much smaller so that's why we go for weaker hardness test 
and also here also there is one formula to be used to get the hardness value. Now we have completed with the three type of tests. We have completed with the tensile test. We have completed with the compression test. We have completed with the hardness test, and also we have completed with the impact test. So we have been left over with the two type of important tests called as the uh, fatigue test and the other one is the creep test. So I'll just uh, go ahead with that. Coming to the fatigue test, you might uh, can search the meaning of fatigue in Google and try to understand what is the meaning. Fatigue means weakness or tiredness. So just like human being undergo fatigue or uh, tiredness after continuous working, uh, similarly machine parts also suffer from this type of uh, you know uh, tiredness or weaknesses, and that is called as fatigue. And fatigue results in the decrement in the life of the machine components, and that is called as a fatigue fracture or fatigue failure. Fatigue failure. I'll just give you an example. So suppose if you have come across or you might have an experience of holding a MS wire, which is used in building of houses. The MS wire, if you take and if you try to elongate it in this fashion and try to break, it will never break. That MS wire, which is used to wind around the pillars to get the uh, buildings being done, that MS wire I'm talking about. If you take that MS wire and try to pull it in this fashion, try to break, it will never break. But the same MS wire, if you take and try to pull it in, I mean, uh, rotate. or do in this fashion for something around 50 or 60 times you will see that the both ms wire will be I mean the ms wire will be broken into two pieces this is just a very classical example been given for the type of fracture called as a fatigue fracture wherein a continuous type of loading is being applied on the material and the life of the material is being brought down that is called as a fatigue fracture okay i'll just go ahead with the slides in since 1830s since 1830s people have recognized the impact of this type of fracture on the material that is called as fatigue fracture uh, it is recognized that a metal subjected to a fluctuating or repetitive stress cycle will fail at a stress much lower than the required to fracture on the simple application of load so that means that if you have a material and if you apply single continuous loading its life will be something and if you apply a continuous loading like that decreasing and increasing you will see that the life of that material is lower than that of the previous case this type of loading which is called fluctuating loading or cyclic type of loading is called as a fatigue loading or fatigue fracture okay so uh, fa uh, failure occurs under the condition of fluctuating loading is called as the fatigue fracture fluctuating loading means it varies with time i'll give you one more example uh, you might have seen the wings of the aeroplane when the wings of the aeroplane moves in the air you uh, if you see it will be moving or fluttering like this so here also the wings of the aeroplane is being subjected to fluctuating type of loading and sometimes it undergoes a fracture or its life comes down that is called as a fatigue fracture other example is you might have seen the bridges the bridges on which the train moves now the when the train moves it applies a loading on the you know the bridge bridges and then when the truck moves away the loading comes down so such type of loading is called as a fluctuating loading or cyclic loading okay so fatigue fracture is associated with that type that kind of loading that is fluctuating or cyclic type of loading fatigue fracture can be observed in many of the equipments like rotating equipments for example the pump component uh, compressor component wherein shaft will be there which will be continuously rotating such type of machine components are suffering or usually suffer from such type of loading called as a fatigue fracture and the, uh, also seen seen in the bridges offshore structures cranes etc so these are some of the components on which the fatigue fracture uh, is observed or fatigue Uh, you know uh, type of loadings are seen so around uh, 80 to 90 percentage of the fractures that happens in the industries is because of this type of fracture called as or loading called as a fatigue fracture called as a fatigue fracture that's why this fatigue fracture is considered as so much uh, dangerous or important is because around 80 to 90 percent of the fracture that happens in the industrial components is because of this reason only one more reason is that whenever a fatigue fracture happens it happens in a brittle fashion it doesn't happens in a ductile fashion so you now uh, you understand that if a metal fractures in a brittle fashion then it will give you very much lesser time to understand before it undergoes a fracture but if the same material undergoes a ductile fracture it will give you enormous amount of time before it undergoes a fracture that's why brittle fracture is considered to be a bit of dangerous in nature compared to that of your ductile fracture ductile fracture so around 80 to 90% of the total fracture occurs is because of the uh, is because of the fatigue fracture only and a fatigue fracture is considered as dangerous because it doesn't gives you a, uh, a sign or indication before it undergoes a fracture 
so if you see this is the motor component and this is the shaft it is i have highlighted this this is the part which will be suffering from the fatigue fracture similarly this part which the teeth of the gears intermittently come in contact after certain duration of time definitely these two teeth will come in contact these are the portions wherein the fatigue type kind of fracture might happen so fatigue fracture is associated with fluctuating type of loading cyclic type of loading wherein the loading is not uniformly applied it fluctuates with the time and the life of the machine component comes down such type of fracture is called as a fatigue fracture and here i have given you an example if you have the ms wire if you take that ms wire and try to elongate it it will never fracture but if you put and do like this it will fracture around 50 to 60 cycles it will come uh, it will it may fracture so that type of fractures are called as the fatigue fracture okay and the test which is being done to understand okay uh, i'll show you this one this slide shows you the uh, freshly freshly fatigue fractured material so if you have a material and if it is fatigually fractured fractured in a fatigue manner the cross section will show like this here there will be a part at which the, there will be an initiation of crack there will be some kind of beach marks and there will be some kind of a uh, you know dots and spots like this which will represent you if you have a fractured surface showing microstructure or uh, the uh, structure like this you should understand that it has undergone a fatigue fracture there will be a point at which the crack has initiated crack initiation or the origin of crack then uh, there will be beach marks which represents the propagation and then there will be the fracture happening like this so this is just an image of a fracture uh, fatigue fracture surface and this is how a uh, fatigue fracture test is being done in the lab to understand its fatigue life so this you might have done in the lab also so here you have the specimen this is the specimen on which or you are trying to find out the fatigue life it is being put into two jaws and then there is one fixture on through which you apply the load so this is a load application and this fixed this specimen is being rotated continuously it is being rotated continuously or 